Hey, thank you very much for joining, guys. So today we're going to look into our first learning outcome. So we're going to start a new unit, which is managing innovation and the change in computing. So what we will look into is uh, understanding. Um, <clears throat> one second, let me just the slide. Yeah, what we're we'll going to cover in today's session is um, um, five major learning outcomes where, where we're going to explore the difference between innovation and change management. We're going to evaluate the organizational benefit of uh, utilizing innovation and change. Also, we will go, we're going to investigate the types of computing changes that can occur in an organization. Then we're going to analyze the potential risks of innovation and change. Then we're going to evaluate the possible impact of change to an organization. And conclusively, we're going to assess how innovation is crucial for a business success. So before we dive in into our tutorial, let's just watch a quick video, which will now explain um, what are the benefits and uh, what is innovation. Hi everyone, Etzian is here and in this video, we will explore what is innovation. One of the fundamental things that help people to achieve their goals is progress and growth. So that's what we will cover in this video. If this is your first time on this channel, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updates on my latest videos about time management and productivity. Innovation means executing an idea which addresses a specific challenge and delivers value to people's lives. Innovation is something new, or it's something existing delivered in a new way, and what was innovative yesterday might be the norm today. Businesses and individuals are always striving for innovation, as it usually delivers great results and new things. Without innovation, we wouldn't have smartphones, wireless headphones, electric cars and many other things that we treat as normal today. Innovation is as important for individuals as it is for businesses and organizations to find new and better ways to work more effectively. You might read a book or take an online course to learn a new skill, but once you put it to the practice, you have to innovate with it. This might be a writing skill, drawing skill or digital marketing skill, and by being innovative, you can find new ways how to use it. When you build a sales funnel, there is so many ways how you can do that. So test out different options and who knows, you might just come across something that converts like crazy. If you want to look for some innovation, then here are some strategies to get you started. First, brainstorming. Innovation is something new and the best way to come up with something new is by brainstorming. You can do it on your own or with your team. Second, observe. Watch how people are doing things. This often indicates their motivation and desires, so it can point towards new ideas and innovation. Third, ask questions. When you want to figure something out, it is worth asking questions, as that can lead to new discoveries. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I was able to give you a quick summary of what innovation is and why it's important for growth and progress. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you could press the like button as this will help the video reach more people and spread the message. So in this video, we have covered um, what are the basic concepts that we will need to know regarding our unit and uh, explain um, what is the difference between um, innovation and changes and how this is important for every type of business growth. So as we have seen, there is um, a definition for this. So well, we are going to understand what is innovation. So 
that innovation is simply the process of improving and discovering new techniques and new uh, technologies that can help our business to scale over the time and will now be able to um, improve our work, our quality uh, and our productivity. So this innovation can now in, in better uh, and now improve how the organizations are structured, also how they're managing uh, the people and uh, those who are working uh, closely uh, with each type of department. And in addition, innovation is also a reciprocal process based on continuous feedback from or, uh, and uh, our organization. So whoever is involved in this uh, process will be improving. So as we can see, uh, there are different diagrams on how a business can now scale up or over the time through innovation. So what are, what could be the major challenges that we can find um, with innovation? Um, such as these could be risk aversion or opportunity, or facing some challenges when managing uh, these new technologies that have been coming up. So we might find it difficult to master or understand how, what are the full potential. Also, how we marketize, how we use these technologies to scale our business in order for us to increase our profit. <clears throat> so when it comes to looking into change, so by change, we could now uh, mean drastically move from one technology into another one. So there is a difference where by innovation, we just improving, we just upgrading while we change. We are drastically jumping from one side to another one in order to try to have a better results or have some improvements compared to what we've had in the past. So we can see how uh, over the years, uh, change has been impacting in every sectors and how uh, this uh, has been done over uh, the recent centuries. So um, we can see now we have some aspects that are facilitating uh, change. From the image, we can see communication is a key aspect where by passing into clear information to our um, stakeholders, we are now able to scale and uh, uh, grow our business. So this uh, is a simple diagram chart, which explains all the people, all the stakeholders involved in the process and how uh, change can be done. Now we're going to evaluate the organization benefit of utilizing innovation and change. So what could be the benefits that a company could obtain by deciding to move from the traditional uh, systems into a new one. So first of all, the main purpose of a company to uh, decide to change will be due to um, money, revenue. So the company, uh, before deciding to make a decision, they will now look into statistics and see if uh, this change might bring uh, more capital into the business. You know, it could help them to scale up or increase the productivity in order for them to grow and uh, expand. So um, there are different benefits that we can see. There is not just financially, or this new system can 
also improve the way they work. We can now benefit not just stakeholders, but even employees can now feel more empowered by knowing that they have learned new skills, they have gained new competency, and they'll be now able to work more efficiently in the team. So these are a couple of examples of uh, what a company can now benefit by, um, by changing and integrating these new technologies. So as we mentioned, um, it's not just revenue, but it's also an overall well-being and uh, culture that will now surround um, the So here we have a, an explanation of what the common cause of organizational change. So some of the issues that might bring uh, the administration the department to make some changes could be due to crisis. So, uh, for example, when we had the crisis of COVID nineteen, many companies had to now uh, come up with ideas to 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 um, save the business in order for them to not lose capital. So that was a good example of uh, change where external um, circumstances, activities have now impacted your business and put you into the position where you now have to make some changes and come up with ideas in order to, uh, to uh, scale up and save your business. So this uh, is related to reaction to internal or external uh, pressures. So other reason of changes could be related to new technologies. So as we all know, technology keep improving and there are always new frameworks, new uh, systems that are launched every single day and the business has to be fast enough to learn uh, this technology able to adapt into uh, their business. Now we're going to investigate the types of computing changes that can occur in an organization. So as we all know, uh, data, how data was generated, say, 20 years ago, is completely different from what we see nowadays. So back in the days, we had Web 1.0, which was very static web pages where there were just a bunch of information and uh, I was there. there was not much of a interaction and uh, the, level, the amount of data that was shared was very to what we see nowadays where the data shared was emails or maybe uh, simple articles while nowadays we have social media, IoT, and uh, there are videos and amount of files that can be shared across. So the way the data can be shared is now on the unstructured level and this data is now very hard to track and keep into place. That's why I am with this unstructured data, you are now coming to uh, a new where we have 3.0, where we now have these new sectors such as computing, data analytics, or data science, which are the major three uh, fields that are driving um, nowadays. So um, here we have an example of the grid systems where this will impact enterprises system where they have to be able to deal with the complexity of uh, the business model and how each department will now uh, communicate with each other in order to get keep the business moving. 
Also nowadays we have cloud computing, where we know that all this data are now stored in remote servers. And uh, we know how this unstructured data can be really hard to, uh, to track and uh, keep into place. That's why we now have this emerging technology. So there are loads of certification that can be gained um, um, in order for us to master cloud computing, the certification such as Microsoft Azure or AWS can now um, help in this field. So as we all mentioned, uh, with mobile application and social media. Now we have a max and exponential growth of uh, unstructured data that has been shared. And now we have this field, which is very important to uh, extract useful data, process it and create uh, reports. So this process, all this uh, business model is now analyzed by a data analyst who is in charge of extracting, as I said, uh, useful data, raw data, where you're now mining the raw data, and now you're building models, predictive models, in order for us to um, have insights and uh, useful uh, reports. So we have also information security which is a really emerging technology uh, where a lot of people are now moving to, such as cybersecurity as well, where, um, where we know with this amount of data, it's very hard to, it's very easy for uh, the data to be accessed from unauthorized um, individuals. So some key principles of information security are confidentiality, integrity, availability, and non uh, repudiation, and we have authentication and accountability. Now we're going to analyze um, the potential risk of innovation and the uh, changes. So by innovation is a complex process with many different stages and uh, inherent risks. So this, it will now often require, it will often require an investment of time and money before any possible effect become visible. So this is the definition of risks in innovation. So we need to be able to have some risks management skills and understand what to what are the tolerance to what point we can to to which level or point we can push, we can take risks. So we need to be able to understand what are the limits and how we now have to be able to uh, control the situation in order for us to not, um, not ruin our business. So there are various aspects on this area. And uh, here we have to look into some concepts that are really important in risk management, such as business, leadership, distribution, also what is forcing change. And uh, here we have a small diagram, which explains the execution of risks and of uh, the risks that comes with change changes. Now, conclusively, we're going to evaluate the possible impact of change for a organization. So depending on which type of organization you work and which sectors you are, we need to know what could be the negative impact that our company might face by taking risk of 
changing, um, uh, migrating to the new uh, framework. So one of the most important thing to know is that there could be a loss of uh, capital revenue if the if the change if the new system that we have now adopted did not give the expected results, which can now impact every stakeholders, and it could even lead to a point where we have to make some stuff redundant. So this can be one of the really important risks that can come from making these type of changes. And the other type of um, risks could be meeting the, our stakeholders' expectations. <laughs> Looking into the benefits um, can be that the organization can now respond faster to customer demands. So we can now able to maximize the full potential of our uh, system. And we can now gain a lot of uh, um, relationship with our new customers. Also, another good example can be uh, employee performance increases when the staff feels supported and understand the change process. Now we're going to analyze we're going to access how innovation is crucial for a business solution. So we have looked into the definition where uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So this is a very famous quote where it makes us understand that we cannot expect to have some improvement if we don't take the risk of making some changes. So these are examples of some companies where they've made uh, innovation, they have taken innovation into accountability and made some significant changes. So this was everything for today. Thank you very much for joining.